Hello all, welcome to this video on Networking Lab. Today I'll be talking about how to configure a DHCP server in Cisco Packet Tracer. Let us look into what DHCP is. DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is a client server protocol that automatically provides an IP host with its IP address and other related configure information such as the subnet mask and default gateway. DHCP allows host to obtain required TCP IP configuration information from a DHCP server. Now let us look into why use DHCP. Every device on a TCP IP based network must have a unique unicast IP address to access the network and its resources. Without DHCP, IP addresses for new computers or Computers that are moved from one subnet to another must be configured manually. IP addresses for computers that are removed from the network must be manually reclaimed. With DHCP, this entire process is automated and managed centrally. The DHCP server maintains a pool of IP addresses and leases an address to any DHCP enabled client when it starts up on the network. Because the IP addresses are dynamic rather than static, addresses no longer in use are automatically returned to the pool for reallocation. Now the network admin establishes DHCP servers that maintain TCP IP configuration information and provide address configuration to DHCP enabled clients in the form of a lease offer. The DHCP server stores the configuration information in a database that includes a valid TCP IP configuration parameter for all clients on the network, valid IP addresses maintained in a pool for assignments to clients as well as excluded addresses, reserved IP addresses associated with particular DHCP clients, which allows consistent assignment of a single IP address to a single DHCP client and the lease duration or the length of time for which the IP address can be used before a lease renewal is required. A DHCP enabled client upon accepting a lease offer receives a valid IP address for the subnet to which it is connecting Requested DHCP options, which are additional parameters that a DHCP server is configured to assign to clients. Some examples of DHCP options are router, which is a default gateway, DNS servers, and DNS domain name. Now let us look into the components of DHCP. The first one is a DHCP server. The server device is in charge of answering an IP address request, provide an available IP address, store it for the time of the lease and renew it later. It will handle the communication with all the client devices. The server could be a computer or part of a router. Second component is a DHCP client. It must be present on the client devices which is a computer, mobile, IoT device etc. It will request an IP address and communicate with the DHCP server to get it with the rest of the data and confirm the process. Third component is a DHCP scope. This is the range of IP addresses that the DHCP server can offer to the DHCP client. Usually the server will auto assign addresses starting from the smallest number and going to the highest. Next is a subnet. If a network is divided into pieces, there will be so-called subnets. Next is a lease. This is the time period that indicates how long a client can use the assigned IP address before it expires. Lastly, we have DHCP relay. The relay is in charge of communication between the DHCP server and the client. It will listen for messages and pass them to the right place. Now let us look into the IP address mechanism of DHCP. 
There are three ways that you can configure the DHCP server. First one is automatic allocation. This one will automatically assign an IP per client permanently. The IP address will be designated for just one device. So if in the future many new devices get connected, the server could run out of IP addresses to give. Next is dynamic allocation. This is the most common configuration available. The server auto assigns IP addresses to clients, but there is a time period. After the time expires, the client needs to ask for a new IP address again. This will prevent the running out of IPs. Third option is manual allocation, which is manually the network admin giving IP addresses to the client. Next, we look into the working of DHCP. Imagine we have a network of connected devices and a DHCP server that manages the IP address. Step 1 is DHCP discover. When you connect a new device, it still doesn't have an IP address. It will search for an IP address. It will call over the network for a DHCP server. This request will arrive to all of the devices and the server will also get it. The second step is DHCP offer. The DHCP hears the call and answer with an IP address that it offers it to the newly connected device. Third step is DHCP request. The IP address arrived to the device and the device will accept it and will send a request to use it. The fourth step is DHCP pack. The server gets the accepting message from the device. It will provide the IP address to the device together with the subnet mask and the DNS server. It will write a record with the information of the newly connected device that usually include the MAC address of the connected device, IP address that was assigned and the expiry date of that IP address. The DHCP leases the IP address for a limited time only. After the time passes, the IP address will go back to the IP pool of available IP addresses and can be assigned to a new device again. Next, we will look into the benefits of DHCP. DHCP provides the following benefits. Reliable IP address configuration. DHCP minimizes configuration errors caused by manual IP address configuration such as typographical errors or address conflict caused by the assignment of an IP address to more than one computer at the same time. It also leads to a reduced network administration. DHCP includes the following features to reduce network administration. Centralized and automated TCP IP configuration, ability to define TCP IP configuration from a central location, Ability to assign a full range of additional TCP IP configuration values by means of DHCP options. Efficient handling of IP address changes for clients that must be updated frequently, such as those for portable devices that move to different locations on a wireless network. And forwarding of initial DHCP messages by using a DHCP relay agent, which eliminates the need for a DHCP server on every subnet. Now let us see a demo on how a DHCP server is configured in Cisco Packet Tracer. Now before seeing the demo, we look into how the network that we are going to configure will look like. So it will have three PCs whose IP address will be assigned by the DHCP server and the switch connecting them, then there is a router gateway and finally the server. So the gateway address here will be 10.10.10.1 and the IP address of the DHCP server will be 10.10.10.2. In the DHCP server, we will give the IP addresses starting from 10.10.10.3 to be assigned to these three PCs based on the availability of address. Now, to check if this server is working properly, after setting up the DHCP service, we will check in each PC whether the IP address 
and the gateway address has been reflected as per our instructions given in the DHCP server. If it is done, the configuration is done correctly. Now we move in to see the demo. So as per the network we saw before, we have three PCs which will be connected to a switch and there is a router which will be the gateway. Then we finally have the DHCP server. This option for connection will automatically assign the connections between the two devices selected. You can even specifically take a connection and assign it to the required port also. So now I'm going to the router, going to the configuration. Now I need to check which port will be acting as the gateway in this case. So when I click there, I see it's 0, 0. So I'll choose that particular port, enable it as on, and give the IP address as 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 and the subnet mask will be automatically filled in. Next, I need to set up the DHCP server. There, I'll give the IP address 10.10.10.2. Mask will be given automatically and the default gateway will be 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 then I'm going to the services option. There, I'll choose DHCP. There is already a pool there. I'll edit the contents in it. So I'll go and switch on the service and I'll change the gateway as 10.1. I'll also change the starting IP address range from 10.3 and mask will also be changed and I'll save it. So it will be saved onto the default option there. Now I'll go to each PC and go to the desktop option IP configuration. I'll give the option static change to DHCP. So you can see that it has been successfully configured. First PC will have the address 10.3. The second PC is having the address 10.4. And the final PC will have the address 10.5. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.